Hey there, I'm Zeke. I'm an engineer at Replicate. And today I want to show you a new thing we've built for making it even easier to publish your own Dreambooth model using GitHub Actions. So recently we published this blog post about um, an API that we built that makes it really easy to train and publish your own model using um, Dreambooth. So in this blog post, we had sort of a, a series of steps that you follow where you you go onto your command line, you zip, you create a zip of your training data, you use curl to upload that data to, to an HTTP URL somewhere, and then you hit our API to actually kick off the training process and generate a model. So what we have today is a GitHub Actions workflow that does effectively the same thing. Um, so you can actually train your own model just entirely on GitHub without having to write any code. So let's take a look at this repository. It's pretty simple. There's a readme, there's a data directory, and there's a GitHub workflow file. So the data directory is just a folder full of images. So by default, it's got these puppy images that were used by the Google team who created Dreambooth. Um, you're gonna actually be removing these files and replacing them with your own custom images that you wanna train. And here in the data directory, me, there's some more details about um, what kind of images you should use. So in the workflows directory, um, there's this training script. And I'll walk through a little bit of how this works. So GitHub Actions have different uh, triggers. So you can actually have workflows that will trigger when you uh, push to the main branch or when a pull request is merged or when an issue is opened. But there's actually this other kind of trigger called a workflow dispatch where you can actually manually trigger an Actions workflow by clicking a button on github.com. So that's what we're using here. And so when you use the workflow dispatch um, trigger, you can actually define inputs that will be used to generate a form that you have to fill out when you're triggering the workflow. And we'll see that in a minute. So what this script, what this workflow actually does when you kick it off is it checks to make sure that you've set proper uh, secrets. You need to set a replicate API token so you can actually push to, to the replicate website. Um, it checks out your code. It zips up the training data into a zip file. It uploads the training data, and then it kicks off the training process by using that same curl command that we saw in the blog post to um, create your new model and train, train the model on the images that you provided. And then lastly, we get some output that links us to our new model. So let's actually, let's actually go through this process. So I'll go back to the readme. And the first thing to do is actually fork this repo. So I'll go up here and fork it. You'll notice that it's private right now, but by the time this is published, it'll be a public open source repository. Okay, so now I've got my own fork. The next thing I wanna do is, normally you would be removing the cute puppy images and replacing them with your own, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip that step for the purposes of this demo. And I'll jump to this part where we set a, a secret in our GitHub repo. So I'll go up to the settings tab and secrets and actions secrets. I'll create a new repository secret and we'll call it replicate API token. And I'm gonna move this off screen so you don't see the token that I pasted in. So now I've got that set there and I can go back to the readme and see what's next. All right. so. Actually, all we have to do now is trigger the workflow. So I'll go to the Actions tab up here. And then we get this warning because we forked this repository. And so GitHub shows you when you forked a repo, just be aware of what the workflow files contain before you run them. Um, so I would encourage you to look through that workflow file that I just showed you to get a sense of whether it's safe to run or not. I'm gonna go ahead and click this green button because I know it's safe. Now on the left column here, I have, uh, we only have one workflow and it's for training a model. So I'll click that train a model. And then this is that button I was telling you about that was on that uh, workflow dispatch thing. So there are three inputs to fill out here. One is the name of the replicate model. And this is the only one that's not pre-filled. So the name is gonna be, start with your replicate username, which is also your GitHub username. So mine is Zeke, followed by some name for your model. So I'm gonna call mine dog booth. And then this is where you specify um, an identifier, which is a string used 
that you use in prompts when you're actually typing out a prompt to generate an image after you've trained the model. So um, this should be something that is not a real word because if you use a real word, then it'll confuse the uh, diffusion model because it'll already have some pre-existing notion of what that word looks like. So this should obvious, this, this should ideally just be some random string of characters. So I'm gonna type something that's similar to dog. So I'll do DGG. Um, and then with training steps, 2000 is a sensible, sensible default. Um, you can set this to a lower number and then the training will happen faster, or you can set it to a higher number and the training will happen more slowly, but it'll also be more, um, probably produce more high quality outputs. But it seems like 2000 is a sensible default. So let's go ahead and run this workflow. And you'll see here, after a while on this actions page, the workflow will, will show up. And this actually runs very quickly. So if we click into this training process, we can actually see it going through. So the whole thing is actually already done. So what happened here? It checked to make sure we set the right secrets, checked out the code from this repo, it zipped up the training data, uploaded it to replicate, kicked off the training process. And now in here, we can see there's a link to the model. So if we click this, it'll take us over to replicate.com. And now we have our dog booth model. So a couple things to note here. Um, this model is private by default. So that means only I can use it until I decide that I want to let other people see it. So um, that means also that if I create images with this model, those will also be private by default, unless I decide to share them with someone. If I want to share the, this model and make it public, I can go into the settings tab here and there's a toggle here for public or private. So we're going to leave it private by default. You'll also notice that there's nothing here yet. So one thing to, to note is that um, you may have seen on this previous page that the training process takes a little while. It takes, depending on the number of training steps, it can take 10 to 30 minutes. So um, what you're going to want to do for now is just come back to your model page every once in a while hit refresh, and when it's done, instead of seeing this, now it's time to push it, you'll see an actual form with an input that lets you type a prompt to use your model. You'll also see in here something about, okay, well, it's a 404 for now, we should probably fix that, but you'll see um, an indication of how you can run this model with Python or curl or other programming languages, um, or also using cog or Docker. Um, but for now, you just have to wait. So. Uh, I have a pizza in the oven and I think it's almost done. So I'm going to stop this recording and we'll come back afterwards to see our new model. All right. Bye-bye. And we're back. So that pizza was delicious and the model trained successfully. So I've got here my dog booth page. I refreshed it and uh, I ran a prediction. So I entered a prompt here a velvet painting of DGG playing poker. And the important thing here is that we use this identifier DGG that we use during the training process so that it knows what concept we're talking about. Um, and I opened a few tabs and you can see some examples of some of the output here. Here's DGG wearing sunglasses. Here's DGG as a Pixar character. Here's DGG in a pencil sketch. So one thing you'll notice at the top of um, the page here is that you get this sort of um, prompt to do more stuff to kind of polish off your model so you can share it with other people. So one of the things we're gonna to wanna to do is go back to our repo, copy the URL, and I will go ahead and set that in my settings here as my GitHub URL. And then let's talk about, let's show you how to add an example. So if you generate a prediction and you like it and you think it looks cool and you think it's a good example of what your model is capable of, then you click this add to example gallery here. And now this prediction will show up under the examples tab on your model with all of the inputs and output that it generated. So I have a few of these that I like. I think this is a pretty good one. So I'm gonna add this as well. And what was this other one? DGG playing poker. I think that's pretty good too. So we'll add that to the example gallery. And now when we go to examples, we can see all the different versions 
of DGG doing different things. And I think that's it. Have fun training your own dream booth model. And if you have any trouble, hit us up in discord.gg slash replicate. And we have a community of people there who can help you out. All right. Bye-bye.